Well, the great cabbage competition has definitely been a spur to the cabbages that everyone picked. This is what we've got. Second week of July. And it's the Morrison's Variety Pack. I think it was £2 for 12 all in. Look at these monsters. Very well pleased with that. And this, despite the uh, drought, they seem to have thrived. Can't wait to tuck into some of these with some bangers and mash. Well, you can see the problem here where the actual beans are supposed to have set. These are, are stringless beans uh, climbing and basically they're not setting. So they're supposed to be stringless, but it looks to me as if I'll also be beanless. So um, following robotics advice, the remaining surviving flowers, we've misted them with water. So let's see if that does the trick then. So you can get too much sunshine on beans after all. Never known that before here in England. See here, this is where I am at the moment amidst the forest of black currants. Now these beauties are obviously super ripe at the moment, rich in vitamin C. There's some red currants in the background. So it's time to crop the beauties. Make some jam. Here I am in Gooseberry Forest and these little beauties seem to have uh, sorted themselves out well this year. Just started picking them along with a few raspberries. So didn't get any last year so this year the gods seem to be smiling on us. Well, the Gooseberry Gods at least. Always nice to celebrate your little successes amidst the welter of failures, isn't it? Mm. Red gooseberries, lovely. I was thinking on this plum tree that I couldn't see many uh, fruit set and then I noticed that not had any on here before and then suddenly noticed that there's a little cluster here and I got a little bit excited and then I thought well what about the rest of the tree? Well there's a few there, yeah there's been a few little fly strikes so I'll have to deal with that but when I went round the back I got very excited. Yes, this is me, very, very excited. And you don't see that very often. Look at this lovely cluster. It's like grapes, isn't it? Well, that's a big success. I did try the uh, little artist watercolour paintbrush technique with these. And we have that uh, horrible uh, beast from the east. Only just finished, but obviously it worked on this, on this uh, plum tree. Yippee! Not all of the dwarf fruit stock have been successful, but I have got some um, apples like L-Star, uh, Spartan, and the brownies in the background there, um, that's done very well. Some trees that did very well last year have nothing on them, but then the tree next to them um, can be laden. As you can see, there's one there just beyond this one here, which has got nothing on it. And the next one's loaded, so it's horses for courses with apples this year folks do about your leeks. Try them year after year and you get this dismal failure. They get uh, attacked by some sort of rot. Um, tried Musselboro and uh, De Carrington and these ones another variety and it looked like they're heading the same way. My neighbour seems to have the same problem and uh, he's a much better uh, gardener than I am. Don't forget that your wild beauties, this little beauty is Roman chamomile, um, probably brought over by the Romans themselves when they helped themselves to Britannia and uh, this I'm reliably informed um, from A Little Dirt Never Hurt. You can mix it with some lemon balm and lavender and something else he mentioned and it's night night. Good, well I'll try some with a mixture in it. And this at the back of the chamomile is the white yarrow. Um, which seems to like it on these clay soils and in the background is a lavender and well, of course it's helped itself there so I suppose it's welcome and then at the back of that is my little baby fig tree. I always fancied figgy pudding and I know that uh, obviously uh, figgy pudding must be on the menu um, for one or two of you out there. Woody especially seems to be the 
the guy we uh, follow on figs and you've got a few herbs there haven't you so you've got your herbs as well as your figs not for no figs on this yet though so we'll see in the years to come sandwiched in between this bay here which I planted as a baby sort of hedge and the raspberries to the right is my most ancient of plants ginkgo biloba um, so I've seen little tablets from this plant um, in one of that little department store near me called the range and I looked at what it says that they do and apparently it's for your circulation so there you go popped it into my allotment only because I do love weird and wacky plants and apparently this is one of uh, Earth's very ancient plants going right back in through the dawn of the mists of time and of course uh, long before we humans were on Earth well what a treat well the pears have been a bit grumpy this year I've got one there and I thought that was it and then it's really excelled itself and given me two pears on one tree well well however I suppose you could argue that's better than no pears on no trees I suppose you wouldn't be too surprised to know that living near Nottingham I used to be in an archery club and there I discovered that if you weren't very good at archery uh, and you were a club member then the best thing to do was to get off the um, bows where you could do the Olympic standards and just shoot the longbow because if you actually have a longbow and you're not Robin Hood no one really expects you to score a high target so of course many members did opt for this option and applying the same technique to allotmenting as I often do um, these plants along here um, are hedging plants and basically one year they will give me some slows but for now look at the wonderful shade they provide so uh, that's one way around things I believe these are sometimes used as rootstocks but on tough conditions like this sort of soil the clay soil they do well giving shade and protection to animal uh, and human alike so a gardener's friend and possibly some slows thrown if you're lucky as well my two quid little Tesco uh, mystery tree which turned out to be a plum in their sale grafted rootstock um, has had a bad time under the sun so I've given him a little hat and then as you can see even now in the late evening um, it's been blasted with sunshine but I think it's a little hat oh, oh, I, say I think it's a little happier now that he, he's got his little hat on a bit like me really do you know I've just noticed going on the other side of this pear tree I thought it only had two pears it looks like it's got about half a dozen more at the back of it I should have gone to Specsavers shouldn't I when the beast from the east came we got all excited before it because we planted these purple sprouting uh, broccoli and then of course as it got to minus seven and minus eight which okay not cold for other countries but for us that's blinking cold and the wood pigeons were ravenous so they ate my entire crop which I forgave them because they are wild creatures and they did have to live outside in it but they left one behind the little runty now Runty's made it right through now from you know when we planted it before Christmas in 2017 to now so thank you wood pigeons good on you left me a one purple sprouting broccoli for me perhaps you'll come back and eat that one later well I've just enjoyed being lacerated by gooseberry thorns have you ever had one in your finger I got one in my uh, uh, one of my right hand here and it stayed for about two weeks I had to in the end dug it out with a needle I used a load of tea tree on it oh a load of pus came out but basically anyway uh, crying whinging aside it's worth it though isn't it just for the agony just for the agony to get these lovely gooseberries well they just keep coming and coming this year the Hinamaki what a surprise the squash that I planted and I planted two of the varieties here it's quite a sweet varieties just coming into flower now so we'll have to see how it goes on as you can see there's a, a flower down there so we'll have to see whether I'll get any squashes now look at this this is the first time we've ever grown this and I have to say I'm extremely excited not about the ant 
there, but about those two little babies there, the courgettes. In fact, I'm so excited, I'm going to do a happy dance. France won the World Cup, but I've got some courgettes. Yes, and apparently these winter squash um, are called onion or uchiki curry looking at the label and they're quite sweet. So I've got two of them, let's see how they get on. I did put um, this black cover down but uh, we noticed, myself and my better half noticed when we came down that uh, the local mice have um, had it all for nests. So uh, anyway, I don't think they'll be on our plot, but uh, they're certainly very active, those rodents. Next door to the winter squash, the onion winter squash as it's called, is the actual spring onions. And these alliums haven't done fantastically here, but at least they have come up. Granny Smith's apples on a dwarf rootstock have been happy here. So this crop looks like it should be okay. Trying to keep it ant free. I tried the uh, putting some Vaseline around them and also spraying with a load of eucalyptus and I've tried also garlic spray. The ants don't like that so hopefully they'll be aphid and ant free. This is what I was saying about the climbing beans. I've only got about three beans. There's one there um and i think there's two here and that's it so um thank you very much for robotic for giving me the tip on spraying the uh blossom oh sorry just trumped then never mind just to show that uh, i'm not a robot i am a human being and basically i uh oh lost myself there what I was saying yes I'm going to try spraying the misting these flowers but I might go to plan B as my neighbour has done and actually um, plant some more um, this time ordinary a stringy because these are stringless but we'll see because apparently the, the, the temperature is coming down next week to about 24 25 instead of being 33 well 33 in the sun at more higher despite the drought in the UK I thought I'd I have a go at plant, a cheeky little planting of some dwarf um, French beans. Um, I like to call them dwarf French beans. I don't know why. I think it's just someone I met says dwarf instead of dwarf, but never mind. Dwarf French beans, and they have come up despite the high ultraviolet levels and the drought. If anything, I may well have slightly overwatered. So I've I haven't watered now for three days, um, so they look better now. Ever since I've put up bird scarers, I've been wondering if my plot's been haunted, because when you're on here on your own, I get so scared. But all it is, if you can see it's so silly of me, is this little uh, tin. It's actually a part of a quiche container. It does scare the birds, but it scares it. Listen to that. Oh, it's such a creepy sound, isn't it? And the black bin bag bit there, it, I don't know what it is. It's sort of like... I'm, I'm here and I think it's some sort of cat or something, something's moving and of course that scares the birds away but the reason it's here, as you can obviously see if I bring my camera over to you is I've got my little um, forest of uh, black currants and then next to them is the uh, red currant forest you see uh, and I've put plenty of sticks and plenty of these little scarers but I didn't realise they'd also scare me as well especially when I'm on my own, it's that little clinking sound Oh, it's so creepy, isn't it? Uh, we did heavily prune these back. The summer fruiting, um, a very old vintage variety that was here on the plot being strangled by uh, a bindweed, sort of like a vine thing. Anyway, it's a poisonous thing. Anyway, I, I, I grabbed dozens and dozens of the little babies that were strangled and brought them to the front here by the rubble netting. And now, when I come down, I just pick the ones that are most ripe you see like this when they get they get a little bit darker that one's maybe not quite as ripe as some of the others um and those that fall as you can see there nice food there for any critter that comes along hungry hedgehog possibly hungry little uh, blackbirds seem to like uh, red currants and raspberries so there's something for everyone isn't there i have to uh, pick a few tonight then quickly before they get too soft so two lovely little pears slowly ripening as you can see with that evening sun over there can't wait for them to ripen hmm what can i do with those pears 
managed to get just about all of the bunyards exhibition uh, that were left today uh, so it's one nil to us over the ants just caught the little blighters starting to really attack the crop so that's today's little crop and um, the bunyards exhibition these these seem to be very resistant to the um, black flies you know the little black flies at the ants farm uh, so quite pleased with that so this is the red Hinamalki uh, gooseberries and just a small selection of the black currants the uh, forest awaits in there I have to catch them I suppose before the rains come but uh, it's been absolutely a drought here so no sign of rain yet well here's the soft fruits that um, we've picked today the uh, red currants and the raspberries the red gooseberries and of course the black currants well, some people have barrels of oil, some people have barrels of pilchers and fish down here on the allotment. This is a nice, fat, chunky barrel of comfrey tea and it stinks. It stinks more vile than the sewage works and I've been living close to the sewage works now for ooh, a good 22 years or more. So, mm, taste t says something when this, to me, reeks, but it does. Anyway, ten little, ten little cups. Ten of my little cups, I don't use this for drinking tea out of by the way, of the comfrey into my watering can, made up then to a full watering can. Time to water my mini pops and sweet corn. Well, as the sun's grazing the horizon yet again and the seagulls are flying past at the moment, uh, that's my little trip to the allotment done. I've got to pick some more raspberries. Uh, it's a little raspberries to come. And of course, when I get home, it's sorting out um, ants and creepy crawlies from what you've collected. So creepy crawlies and ants go outside and fruit goes in the fridge, frozen or jammed. It's a nice little scene, isn't it? A nice thin sliver of a crescent there with a planet there. I think it's Venus, the uh, evening star, shining there.